so the first scenario is a young woman. She's a lawyer. She has been complaining of gradual weight gain since many years, probably since the time, you know, she, uh, since she started puberty. She's tried multiple methods. The max she's ever managed to lose is around 13 kilos, but she keeps regaining all of that weight back. She gives a history of irregular menses. She's a predominantly non-vegetarian, but at present is not being able to follow any kind of exercise regime, but uh, at the same time uh, does not have any other major lifestyle concerns like no alcohol or smoking abuse. And she does not have children at present, but she definitely wants to conceive in the future whenever she gets married now her bmi as we sit with our calculators and we get it we are, her bmi is 50.55 which we know lands up in the super obese category so uh first uh dr praveen raj my question is to you what other information do you want from this patient with regard to this patient i think there are uh, many things we will need to know obviously of course certain important things with re regard to history are uh, she she did have some successful weight loss of 13 kilos some some time back. Yeah. So we need to understand what really helped her to understand. I mean, what made her lose that 13 kilos? What exactly did she do? Was it a diet supervised by whom? Was it on her own, or did did she go to a gym? Because what? Because again again, what works on somebody may not work on somebody else. So right. something has worked partially, but I think she has really not been too motivated a person to continue. So this information is very important for us to use it as a weapon in our treatment that we're going to continue further down the line. Could it be whatever? But then that information is important. Right. Then the second information that we need to know more is about uh, about her irregular menses. Has she uh, taken any treatment? Is she diagnosed to have PCOD at any point of time? Or uh, by, by examination? itself does she have any acanthosis or does she have any masculine fascia because that un understanding will give us because on a very personal note somebody who has a severe acanthosis a lot of uh, a lot of hirsutism i think you you actually see it the pcod is seen on the face sometimes yeah. these are patients where weight loss is extremely extremely difficult so these are some two things that i will want to know the history and the examination at this point and uh, obviously many more as we evaluate uh, Dr. Palip, anything you would like to add? Yeah, so I think uh, what we also would like to know is uh, because she's uh, 50 BMI, she's a super obese, uh, uh, whether she has any thyroid issues, uh, whether her lipid profile uh, is uh, good, not good, whether there's a family history of uh, cardiac issues, whether she has uh, sleep apnea, whether she's a loud snorer, uh, all these things and of course we would like to do an endoscopy to see if she doesn't have uh, or she does have any hiatal hernia or any other uh, stomach uh, anatomical issues so that we can decide what particular procedure can be offered to this particular lady. You've already mentioned she has plans for fertility so the least malabsorptive procedure probably would be the best one for her. Right. So, uh, Dr. Barucha, if this kind of a patient came to you, say that uh, the only history she has is of PCOD, no, uh, no other medical issues, and her endoscopy is completely normal, what procedure would you like to offer to this patient? First of all, I think that uh, if she has PCOD, I would like to uh, first make sure that she doesn't have the remaining part of the metabolic syndrome. Right. If she has any, if she has like what Dr. Praveen Raj said, if she has even two factors which are contributing to her metabolic syndrome and she's a young female, I would like to do a procedure which is going to, in the long term, help her metabolically yeah. because lifestyle changes ultimately weight. If she regains weight, we mm -hmm. have to understand that primarily the factors for cause of weight regain are the same factors that caused her weight gain in the first place. Good. So if metabolic factors have caused her to have this much weight gain in the same place, we need a strong metabolic surgery. And I think I would offer her a Romawai gastric bypass. Right. Uh, would uh, either of our panelists agree or disagree? I think, uh, uh, like, like I already mentioned, uh, because she is a young lady, she's still not married and probably wants to have children. I would still, uh, you know, err on the side of offering her a sleeve gastrectomy, counseling her about uh, lifestyle changes, uh, and uh, obviously uh, not giving her a mal malabsorption procedure to begin with straight away. And uh, even sleeves give good results if the patient is motivated enough. 
and uh, wait and watch because you can always convert a sleeve later on if required. But to start directly with a malabsorption procedure is something which I would uh, probably not go for uh, as, as far as this particular age of the patient and uh, history is concerned. Okay, so we've got two choices already, one RYGB, one sleeve. Uh, Dr. Praveen, your choice quickly, one justification for it. Yeah, so if the patient is not going to have a PCOD, I would do a sleep. If she's going to have a proper PCOD, then I'll do a run by gastric bypass. Right, there you go. So see, this is once again the reason why we included a complex topic like right patient, right procedure and why it is not possible for us to give you any kind of conclusion mm -hmm. as to what to choose because you can see just out here, the more opinions you take, the more can be your, uh, uh, you know, your options. Uh, one thing which we... Uh, sir, Didi, can I add one yeah. more thing? Yes, Can please. I add one more thing? We also, just like, uh, just like we see this problem of weight regain and the causes of weight regain mm -hmm. we we also must realize and you know make sure that the audience also know audience also realizes that revision surgery is never as effective as your primary surgery oh, oh, we should always think that we are going to only get one chance because even if you're going to revise a sleeve into a ruawai gastric bypass your maximum effect is going to be just about 10 to 15 percent i mean you know you may not get any more so if i'm going to have only one chance and I see that this patient has a part of metabolic syndrome, I will go in for and do a raw gastric bypass. Right. So one thing which you do need to consider also, according to me, is a patient choice. Nowadays, patients are very well educated. They read up everything online and they uh, already believe that Google has taught them anything and everything about this particular procedure. The patient themselves may come up to you and tell you that, no, I don't want any kind of severe alteration in my, uh, uh, in my uh, normal anatomy. You do only a sleeve. A patient may come up to you and tell you that it's okay. I'm fine with the risk of malnutrition. You please go ahead and do an RYGB. So always remember to discuss everything everything in great detail with the patient and also take their opinion into consideration because ultimately it is the patient who's going to live with that particular procedure. Mm -hmm.